Okay, this is video 08. We'll talk about lists. Okay. Until now, the only real structured data we've seen, integer, float, you don't notice the difference because Python automatically takes care of them. So if you have an int and suddenly you need the comma, you con Python converts it into a float automatically. So we've seen int and float, we've seen bool, okay, and we've seen strings. Well, while int, float, and bool are real, real var are variables, a string is not really a variable, it's a data structure because it's a, something a little more complex. You don't notice it, but it's a little more complex. We have in fact seen that it's a, a sequence of character, okay? but unlike integer and float, which you must uh, take it as it is, this you may, may access it using square brackets. For example, we have seen that S computer, and you, if you type S2, you get M. Something which you cannot absolutely do with integer, float, and bool. Integer, float, and bool must be taken as they have written, that's it. You cannot access the third digits of an integer. So. This is because a string is not really a variable, it's an object. So it's a, a more structured data object. We have a similar object, which is a list. A list is more or less the same thing as a string. So is a sequence, while a string is a sequence of characters, a list is more general, it's a list of elements. It can contain inside really anything, so characters, but also other things, and can be accessed in exactly the same way, so you can do something like this. For example, look at this example, if I type A equal, open square bracket, C between quotation, so the character C, or the string C, O M P U T E R. Well, this is it's not the same, but it's a, sim a similar object with respect to this one. You can, for example, ask what is A of two, so zero, one, two. The object, the element in position two is an M. The things inside a list are called elements. So don't start calling them object uh, things, items. You will see that even me, I will commit the mistake of calling them in bizarre ways. No, they're called elements. So these are the elements. This is a list. A list is an object, exactly as a string is an object. An object means more or less a complex variable type, a complex data structure. And the things inside are called elements. Okay, so at this point you can say, well, I have the string, why should I build a list? Well, the advantage of building a list is that you can put inside everything. So you're not limited to putting inside only characters. You can put, look, look for example, a list can contain numbers. This is an example of a list. 3, 5.4, 70, minus 3, 0, 1. So float and int mixed. Okay, in this case, a of 2, 0, 1, 2. Is the element in position 2 is 17. It can contain strings. For example, B equal computer human machine, B2 is machine. Okay. It can contain also mixed thing. So in general, a list is considered to be a variable, even though we say it's an object. A list is made up of a square bracket, it's mandatory square bracket. Okay, then a sequence of expressions. Expression means it can be variables, numbers, strings, mathematical formulas, functions which result in procedures which result in an expression, everything which gives you back a, let's say, value, okay? And you can access the list elements in the same way that we used to access the string elements. So with a square bracket, position, close square bracket. Okay, given this list, define a procedure that takes as input a number representing a month and returns the number of days in that month. So you have this list. Okay. Let's define a procedure using this list. So let's see. Def. How do we call it? Maybe days in month. M. Colon. So I use this list inside the procedure. So it would be better to write using this list more than given. Oh, 
okay let me also correct okay so I defined this list and now look how simple it is return D of wait because the Mac okay, position M. so if D is a 3 I will return the days of March month number 3 if this is 4 I will return the days of April if this is 2 I will return 28 there is a little mistake however pay attention because uh, this is 0 this is January it's 0 so I have to write uh, minus 1 it means that if you type 1 which means January it will return the element in position 0 31 okay. alternatively you could uh, write something like this so you just write uh, a meaningless number at, at position 0 so now this is position 1 this is position 2 okay this this is better so if you type 12 this will be 11 which is this one December okay. can you see much 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 more efficient than the procedure you had to write with if ta 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 if ta 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 if ta 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 because you access directly the right element of the list given the mouth number okay. modify the procedure in such a way that to return 0 whenever the input is out of range so it's very dangerous to use this procedure because if you type days in month of 7 you get July which is 31 but if you type days in month of 13 error list index out of range if you type days of month of minus 0 uh, 0 is also dangerous because 0 becomes minus 1 which is 31 uh, minus 90 index out of range okay. there is also another funny thing if you type 2 colon 3 it will probably type 2831 no, invalid syntax Ah uh, yes, because okay. Yeah, because this accepts only a variable. Okay, so true. We will find. Okay, so we have to modify in such a way to return zero whenever the input is out of range to avoid those mistakes. So I copy the procedure and I just at the very beginning I write if m smaller than 1 or m larger than 12 colon have to return 0 return 0 that's it it's okay. if you want if you want you can write else I think that with else it's clearer but it's not necessary because you return 0 and you don't go on if it is true so if you write or don't write else in this case it's not is the same so this means that days in month of 13 will return 0 okay ah sorry I forgot the print if you don't type print uh, and you just execute the function it still displays what it returns but only the last one so okay now it displays okay, so it's better to write print okay Oop. let me save okay lists have the advantage that they contain mixed types and uh, look they can even contain other lists are you happy let's see an example a equal Oop. apple so a string comma three a number comma trees another string comma oranges another string comma a decimal number comma and now look I put inside another list I make some space just to improve your readability okay and inside this list I put inside another list so 
there's a list which is an element of this list wait pay attention while the square bracket close which is an element of this list so so list can really contain everything including other lists so they can contain variables and objects inside okay so that's a sort of uh, global containers now my question is how many elements does list have list a have well list a has one two three four five six elements so list a has six elements not seven eight nine ten eleven so you don't uh, consider the atomic element you consider the elements at high level so li list a has six elements the sixth the last element of list a has one two three elements itself okay and the last element of this list has other three elements itself so, but if it's like uh, the directories of your file system so a directory can have inside other if you don't know what is a directory i think you are at the wrong course however other, it's a folder a directory has other directories inside which by itself can have other directories inside so if a directory has inside only two directories and one of them contains a thousand files and if I ask you how many elements does the top directory have, the answer is two, not uh, thousand and two. Okay, so how many elements ha does list A have? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Okay. So why can list be useful? Well, we have already seen an example of a problem which was solved with a single line, basically with two lines instead of a complex if okay taking a benefit of the fact that uh, we use numbers to indicate mounts Oops. Ah, but why but another big problem why my face is not displayed ah here it is and how can i make it it's extremely important i know that you care no i there's no way i'm sorry ah i can the Mac, I have to use this trick here. Okay. Okay. Um, why a list can be useful? Let's make an example. Look at this example. Do you know who, who the beaters are? Or well? Do you know? If you don't, uh, Wikipedia. Okay. Look at, twist, at this list. We'll zoom. John Lennon, comma, nineteen forty, okay. comma, string Paul Mac Cartney. Comma nineteen forty two comma mm -hmm. George Harrison And then I admit my ignorance. I don't know the birth year of Ringo Starr, which is something I search on the other computer on Wikipedia Ringo Starr. 1940 okay these are the Beatles and their birth years look this is a, a list containing four elements each element is the name of the Beatles sing 
member and his birth year. Okay, so <gasps> invalid syntax. There is a problem probably with square brackets. Let's see whether I put enough. It's correct. Mm -hmm. It's correct. Ah, here, 90. Oh, there is a comma missing here. Okay. We will see a better way of writing them. You can write them in column, it's easier. Okay, now you can print uh, the list. Okay, that's it. nothing special. Okay, however, you can. Oops. You can print element number two of the Beatles, which is George Harrison. Okay. You can print. element number two of the Beatles followed by element number zero. What does it mean? This one will be George Harrison 1943 and this one will mean only the first one, so George Harrison. George Harrison. Okay. Or if you prefer one nineteen forty three. So it's a, a sort of a data structure. Now, the data, it, you, you can imagine it as a matrix. I hope you know what is a matrix. It's an Excel sheet. And if you've never seen Excel, mm, I will start uh, thinking seriously about taking a course because it's widely used in every office. Okay, so it's a sort of matrix of Excel sheet in which you have John Lennon, 1940, John Paul McCarthy, 1942, John Harrison, 1943, Ringo Starr, 1940, okay. and you can access the elements of the matrix here, say row 2, column 1, okay. which it's in Pythonic, in human language is row 3, column 2. Okay, you can access the single elements. Okay. You can also, let's see what happens if you do something like this. No, this one, uh, iron 3 beetles. And if I do something like this, yeah, this works. A one two Paul McCartney. Oh, oh. Ah, okay, doesn't accept uh, a range. Okay, let's stick with George Harrison. Okay, this one we don't need. Oh, now exercises. Give it this list uh, of lists with countries, capitals and population in millions. Now you can see a better way of writing it. Okay, so if you write it in this way, it's easier than writing everything on the same line. Okay, so here there is, there are, this list has four elements. You can imagine that they correspond to rows. Each row or element has three elements, which correspond to columns. First one is the name of the country, second one is the capital city, third one the population in millions, obviously. Okay, print the capital of India. Print C of 1, India is country 1. This will print everything, the capital city is 1, Delhi. Okay. Um, if you are wondering whether there is a way to automatically find to which index does India correspond, well, in lists there is no easy way to do it. There, are, there is another data structure which does exactly that job. It's called dict. It's dictionary. Okay, it's a different data structure, but now we see uh, lists. Print what multiple of Romania's population is the population of China. Read it three times to, in, to understand it. I have written it in correct English and much better than most of the people would ask you. So read it three times. Print what multiple of Romania's population is the population of China. So the population of China is for sure bigger than the population of Romania. How much bigger? Three times, 20 times, 50 times? So you have basically to print a ratio, China divided by Romania. So print 
population of China, which is zero. Two, that's it. Yes, divided by population of Romania, which is two zero. Op, op, two zero zero one two. Ah no, not zero two two. Sixty four. Pay attention. Pay attention. That is the integral division because this is an integral. This is an integral. Okay. Ah, first of all. Okay. Now I understand why. Let me cut it and paste it here. Okay. Okay. Is there any way to get a float division instead of an int division? Well, there are several ways that you can get a float division. There are dirty tricks, I must admit. Let's see. First dirty trick is the following. Because usually the dirty trick is to put a dot, but in, if you have a number. Here you don't have the number, so how can you put the dot? I can't put the dot here. Where is the camera? Okay. So the first dirty trick is the following plus zero dot. You add that zero dot, which doesn't change your result, but the fact that you add zero dot, Python will automatically convert the thing between parentheses to a float, and so the result will be okay. Second dirty trick. You convert one of the two, doesn't matter which one, to float, just writing float in front. You have now discovered that if you write float in front of something, you convert it to float. If you write int in, float of, in front of something, you convert it to int. If you write bool, you convert it to a bool. If you write star, you convert it to a string. Okay. Obviously with the consequences. So if you have a float and you convert it to an int, it will be cut. If you have an int and you convert it to a bool, if it is zero, it becomes false, everything else becomes true. If you have a number, you convert it to a string, it is now a string, so with the consequences. Oop. Okay. Increment all the populations by two. Ah, no, increment the population of China by one million. Let's do one thing at a time. Okay, increment the population of China by one million. Uh, how to do it? Well, C. Population of China is this one. This one is equal to the same thing by plus one. Okay, done. Let's see. Yes, done. Increment all the population by 2%. So in this case, I will need to do it zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, uh, oh, one, two, three, not plus one by one point zero two. Do you know that incrementing something by two percent means multiplying by one point zero two? Eh? If you don't know it. Tell me for which company will you go working and I will come and propose you interesting uh, affairs uh, in which I will cheat you easily. Okay, this will increment all the population by 1.2. Let's see the result. Print C. So you can see they have been incremented by 2%. Depends on the original population, obviously. Wouldn't it be nice to automatize the increment with a while loop? Yes, it would. Which means that you can do it as an exercise at home. Okay, it's easy. You just make a while in which this becomes zero, one, two, three. Okay. Easy peasy. We will learn, however, a slightly more efficient way 
for doing this one. More efficient, more easier to write. Is easier to write. Okay. However, with a while loop, it's fine. Okay. Now we have some methods. A method I remind you is a, a sort of function which you can attach to an object. So you have the object. You write dot name of the method. Open parenthesis the method uh, arguments. Okay. So this is a method. We have already seen a method. It was the find method. Okay. The method usually returns something, a statement, an expression. Okay. Uh, we have seen the find method, which returns the position of a string inside another string. Some methods, however, are more intrusive. While the find method limits to returning something and that's it, the append method modifies the original object. So pay attention because the, some methods are able to modify the original object. The find method didn't modify the original string. The append method instead, well, doesn't matter what does it return. It returns something, but it's not so relevant. The important effect that it modifies the original list appending another element. Let's see how does it work with a particle example. It's easy peasy, so. Hop. Hop. My list equal, let's write some numbers. 7, 14, 21, 28. My list append. What will this do? Well, this uh, let's do. Let's check. Print my list. I write it just to be sure of what's happening. Okay. So I have this list. Okay. Print just to show it that it's like that. This method will append 35 to the list. So changes my list object. Okay. The method returns also something, so if you want, you can also print what does it return, but it's totally irrelevant. Okay, can you see original list? After the append, it does what it should. Let's see what does it return. I think it will return 35, let's see. No, it doesn't return anything, so this method does not return anything. Known. Okay, so print can be also omitted. Okay. And simply modifies the list. So be aware that most methods don't return anything but modify the original object. So pay attention because while a function never modifies your original object, a method can do it. Okay. Now some of you may be tempted to do something like this. My list dot append. And I append another list. 35, then what do we have next? 42, 49. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, but this won't do what you expect. Okay. What will this do? This will append not these three elements as elements of this list. This will append this list as an element of the list. Let's see. Can you see? It's not what you expect. Eh? It appended the 35, 42, 49, not as individual element, but as a fifth element of the list. Okay. So beware, if you want to append a list to another list, but not as an element, but appending the individual elements, this using the append, it's not the right way of doing it. So append is only for appending one element. Okay, we will see a way to join two lists. You can now easily get what it is, but let's see first the pop method. Pop method does exactly the opposite. Pops out the last element of the list. Okay. And returns it. This time it returns. Let's see. My list. Let's be original, always the same. Okay. Now let's print my list. My list dot pop. No argument. Print my list.
you see, after the pop, the 28 has disappeared. If you ask it to print, the pop returns also the element that has been popped out. You see, it returns the element. For example, you can put it in a separate variable, element popped out equal. If you want, okay, now in element popped out, we have In element pop it out inside element pop it out you have what has been popped out typical operation where you want to take the out, out the last element okay so these are convenient methods exactly there exists the plus also for list it works exactly as for strings because strings are more or less lists okay the plus concatenates two list concatenates to list exactly as the plus for strings was concatenating the strings. Okay, see, it's the concatenation of list exactly. Pay attention that it doesn't sum the elements as you think. Let's see. A equal. I zoom so you see better. Seven comma eight. B equal two comma zero. Okay. Now, many people probably believe that the result will be 9,8. No, no, no. The result is the concatenation of the two strings, not the sum of the elements. It's the concatenation of the two strings, so of the two lists. So it's a long list with the elements of A and B. They can have also different uh, elements. So, so the plus works exactly as the plus for strings concatenates the list one after the other okay it does not sum the elements because in principle in simple, the elements of a list could be also be strings other list or even more complicated objects okay len function the len is a function and not a uh, method. The len function tells you how many elements does the list have. So easy peasy. So for example, now we have list B. Uh, let's write it. Print len B. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So five, which means that uh, B of five doesn't exist. Eh? Because remember, Python starts counting from zero, so this is the element four. Okay. And uh, if we write something like this, print len b is still five. One, two, three, four, and the final list. If you write print len of b of four, so what's the length of element four of of list b? This one is ten. Okay. Okay. It just counts the number of elements in the uh, external list. Doesn't matter if some elements are list themselves. Okay. What is the value of len p after running this code? Let's put a space for the answer. Okay. So p equal one two p append 7, it means that now p is 1, 2, 7, p equal p plus 9, 8, which means that now p is 1, 2, 7, 9, 8, 5, the length of p. Okay, okay let's go on with the functions. Sorry for the little switch in the video. Uh, extend the method. Okay, it's a method for lists. 
this one is used to concatenate a list with another list. So it's what append does, append here, the append method does. But instead of having a list here, you have, instead of having a single element of the list, you have an entire list. Okay, it doesn't append the list as an element, it appends the list as a list. So it basically, it's the plus. Okay, let's see a little example. So, uh, uh, two, three, B equal seven, nine, eleven. Okay, if I type A, A, extend b okay let's here print a and let's print a after the operation you can see this is a and this is a extended by b it's very different eh, from uh, when you do append instead as the result is very different this is this is the third element of list a which is a list itself this is instead it's very similar to plus. So if I write uh, a equal a plus b, this is perfectly identical. Okay. So del function. It's not a function that I like very much. It allows you to delete an element from a list. Well, I'm sorry, I have already the example below. So let's copy. Okay, this is a. Okay, suppose you want to delete this element here. Okay, so del a, it's a function, it's not a method. So, so I delete the second element, second in Pythonic, which means zero, one, two, this element here. Okay, so let's do it. Print a and print a after the deletion. Okay. Okay. Pay attention that unfortunately you must every time specify the list and the element index. If you just say del 3, so meaning this element here, it won't understand, can delete literal. Okay. So you must specify clearly the list and the element. Okay, the index method. The index method lets you find the position of an element inside a list. So a equal John Jack and Paolo print a dot index and let's see two. Zero, one, two. If the element doesn't exist, error, but it gives you an error. Okay, and if you have the element several times, I'm curious about it, or it gives you the first. So it gives you the first position of the element in a list. Okay, the sort method. The sort method changes the list. Okay. It's used to sort it as the name suggests. So, for example, a equal eight zero minus three five point five five six twenty. Print a just to be sure, and then a dot sort. Print a. It changes the list. Eh? Okay. Does it return something? I write here that it does not return something, but let's check. No, none. It doesn't return anything. In fact, here I write statement. This means that it's simply a statement. So it's an instruction. Statement means instruction. Doesn't actually return, doesn't give back something. Okay. There is a possibility to reverse it, in, to sort it in the other direction with reverse equal true. And if I just write true, no, just write true doesn't. Uh, okay, so there is the parameter reverse of the sort method. You have to specifically speci explicit explicitly specify it. Okay, it sorts in the reverse direction. 
אה, אוקיי, תצית. Just pay attention because it effectively changes the list. Then we have the range function. The range function creates a list. The range function creates a list of numbers. Okay. Starting from this one, going on up to this one excluded, okay. with steps of this one. Let's see some examples. Print range. Starting from uh, 7, going on up to... Uh, 23 okay with steps of uh, 3 let's see 7 10 13 16 19 22 I'm cool if I write here 22 it will go up to 19 eh? this one is excluded if I write 22.5 does it accept it no there must be integral okay so it starts from here it arrives up to this one excluded and it makes it steps of this one. Clearly, most of the times you will use it with one, so you have all the numbers, and very often you will use it with zero. Okay, so you have a list of numbers starting from zero going up to 21 with steps of one. And if I can, I go backwards, I'm curious. Yeah, and if I go backwards, but uh, this one is larger, no, empty. Because we start from 22, go up to 33, but go backwards. Okay, uh, these three arguments can be sometimes omitted. Okay, if you omit the last one, so better, if you specify just two arguments, it will start from 10, going up to 33 excluded with steps of one. If you write only one argument, okay, uh, Python supposes that you are omitting uh, the first one, so starts from zero. So if you write two and two arguments, the step is automatically one. If you write only one argument, it starts from zero. It goes uh, with steps of one up to 33 in this case. See? So if you write just range of these three, it's what most of the times you want. So start from zero, going up to, going on with steps of one. Okay. Okay, last uh, function that we see, well, actually it is a method, but it's a string method. Sometimes you have a string such as this one, for example, look, I zoom. Uh, Paolo, comma, Pietro, comma, Jack, comma, Anne, comma, Mary. Okay. And you would like to convert the string into a list. It's possible with a split operator. You just specify which is your separator, in this case the comma, and it automatically returns a list. So you can just print, you can return, you can see, so automatically everything is done. Uh, the separator can be also more than one character. For example, ABC. ABC. It must be always the same, obviously. ABC. In this case, print s dot split abc okay pay attention because if you obviously don't use the right separator well, the result is not exactly what you want maybe get even worse you see here n the a of n got uh, coked as a separator okay as i wrote before it's sometimes convenient to go through a list okay, automatically, especially if the list is extremely long. So looping through a list is very typical. Okay, I will now show you how to do with a while because you already know how to use the while. However, most of the time it's more convenient to use the for. Let's see how to loop through a list with a while. So build a procedure which prints out all the elements of the list. So very easy procedure. Def print them all it accepts a list okay this procedure accepts a list 
Okay, how do you do it? Well, you have to set up a counter. Okay, while the counter is smaller than the length of the list. Okay, let's write some suggestion for you. With a procedure which takes as input a list L and comma using function len okay just because otherwise you complain that you don't understand what I, I ask okay so now it goes through uh, i is already zero so print uh, l of i i equal i plus one I think we have everything. Let's check. Imagine i has five elements. When I arrive at i equal four, still smaller than the length, I print the fourth element, which exists. Then i is equal to five. Now I don't have to print because element number five doesn't exist. Yes, yeah, seems to work. Let's try. So print. No. I run print them all. I don't have to print it because it doesn't return anything. And I submit a list of uh, uh, 8, 3, 0, 4, 7, last one. Okay. Okay, 8, 3, 0, 4, 7, last one. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. There are other alternatives, for example, an alternative could be this one. You use smaller or equal and divide land minus one. Okay. This works fine. Another alternative could be let me check. <laughs> Sorry. Another alternative could be, could be, could be, you first increment and then print. In this case, unfortunately, if you do like this, you have to start from minus one. You you are, are a bit contorted if you do like this, and you have to do like this. I think. Let's see. Yeah. So if you are very contorted, you can. <gasps> this one doesn't work. That's a problem. This one works. This one doesn't work. Okay. Oh, what's the problem? List index out of range. Ah, you have to. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. pa, 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 pa. Print everything. You first increment and then print. Don't tell me that you have to do like this. Yeah. So if you want, you are, if you increment before, you, are very con you have a very contorted mind, you must start from minus one. Okay, this is, I refuse to explain it in class. Okay. Um, you can use, if you want, pop. Okay. But we will see that uh, in this case, you will destroy the list. Okay. Because while for variables... It's, I don't want to anticipate what I'm going to talk next. You can use pop, but you will destroy the list. For loop, it's much more convenient uh, when you have to go through a list to use a for loop, even though technically it's the same. Why is it much more convenient? Because in the list, uh, you have to take care of the i, of the counter. i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you use instead a for loop, uh, you don't need the counter. The for loop will go through the elements of the list one by one, and you don't have to care. So if you just have to scroll the element of the list one by one, you can use the for loop without any problem. It works like this. For, you specify variable in list, colon, and then the usual block of instruction. What will this do? It will go through the list element by element, and will put each time the element inside variable. Obviously, please don't modify the list in the block because if you modify the list in the block, I can't 
tell you what will happen here, the next step. So if you use a full loop, unless you know what you're doing, don't modify to listen to the block. Okay, now wait for an instant because there is the sponsor. If you drink this thing, you will be able to write Python programs perfectly. Maybe, who knows. Um, so it repeats the block each time with a different element of the list inside the variable. Let's see, exactly the same thing. So def print them all l okay for x in l print x that's it easy no what does this do it goes through the list l okay taking each element of the list and putting it inside variable x now you can do whatever you want inside the block with this x when you are finished, goes on and takes the next element. And this is why I pray you don't modify the value, don't do something like this, uh, uh, print L pop, because then I don't know what will happen here. So don't modify the value, the list there, inside the loop, inside the loop, thank you. Oop. So can you see, you don't have to take care of the index i anymore. Oop. Can you see? Tuck. You don't have to take care of the index i anymore. It does everything. It will, it's useful only if you have to go through all the elements one by one, which, however, most of the time you have. Okay. The advantage with respect to the while loop is that you do not need to take care of the iteration, iteration index. Okay. okay. Usually, whenever you need the iteration index, so whenever you have the index, for example, because you want to jump two by two or you need the index for any reason, use a while loop. Whenever you instead don't need the iteration index and you just go through all the elements of a list, you use the for. But the for is much more efficient usually. Sometimes, however, you would like to use the for and have the iteration index. Okay, you can simulate it, obviously, but usually the best way is to use the range inside a for loop. So let's see how. For example, you have your list here, zoom, uh, 8, uh, 3, 0, 4, 7, blah, blah, so a mixed list. Okay, you want to go through the list and print the elements, for example, for, but this time using a for loop. Normally you do just for x in L and you print x, that's it. Okay. For some reasons, you want the iteration index. So you want to use the iteration, so use for j. You, you can use the while, if you want the iteration index, you can set j equal to zero, while j is smaller than the length of the list, do etc, etc, etc. But if you want to, to do both, so you need the iteration index and you want to use a for loop for j in range, start from zero, which is the first element of the list. Go up to the last element of the list, so you verify ln of l, which 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 6 in this case, so you will arrive up to 5, with steps of 1, print, not j, obviously, but l of j. Why should you want this thing? Well, perhaps because you don't want to print the element itself, but you want to print the element after, okay? Or for you strange reasons, the element divided by two. Does it work? Yes. So you want you must effectively use the index for some reasons. I don't know why. It depends on the problem. Okay. Well, clearly, if you do it like this, uh, a for loop uh, which uses directly the element of the list or a while loop are much more efficient. But if for some strange reasons you need the, the, the index element here, you can do it like this. Uh, please note that this range, since uh, one here and zero here are the default values, you can just write like this. It works anyway. Another reason, maybe you want to go two by two, so not all the elements, 
and two by two and starting from the second one so this will power all the old ones and this all the even ones so you may have your good reasons for using the range it uh, we know how to use it now and it can be handy uh, another little remark for things like this if this list is extremely long uh, well having uh, 200 pages scrolling down may be a little boring so let's see now another little exercise and how to deal with results which are too long so print all the odd numbers from 3 to 145 using a for loop and a range function so do it stop the video and do it okay well we do it together for j in range start from 3 going up to 145 so 146 all the odd numbers so step of two so it will be three five seven okay print j because i just needed the number here okay can you see the result is using a lot of space in the vertical direction and that's why here you do we do the previous exercise printing everything on a single line there is a little trick in python 2 so if you use python 2 if you just write like this this little trick will suppress the end of the line, so we'll not put the end of the line. Tuck. It's more or less like what we did printing things like this, uh, J and X. Okay, but you don't specify the second one, so it doesn't go to the end of the line because Python believes there is another one. And just wait for the next instruction. Okay, people using Python 3, <laughs> it's not so easy. In Python 3, the instruction is this one. So print the things to print, comma, and equal empty space. Let's see whether this works also in Python 2. So things to print is j, comma, and equal space. No, in Python 2, it doesn't absolutely work very well. In Python 3, however, I found out, because I'm not using Python 3 here, that this is the i think to write to avoid going to a new line every time in case of a long output and let's see now some typical programming exercises finally we see the first typical programming exercise define a procedure sum list that takes as input a list of numbers and returns the sum of the numbers of the list take your time to do it and then Stop the video. Stop the video. Take time to do it and then watch the result. Def sum list. I suppose that you have stopped the video. Eh? Okay. Now we have a list of numbers for x in. Sorry. Result. I have to set up a variable for x in L result equal result plus x this is exactly what a human person will do so a human person will start from zero so we'll take your hand and start this is my result zero okay then the first element is three three second element is one so i go to four third element is two six six other element is three nine this is exactly what a human person will do. You have to write a result equal to zero because if you don't do it, <laughs> Python will arrive here the first time and will tell you, very well, the new value for result is the old value which doesn't exist. Okay, so if you don't write result equal to zero, Python will complain. Let's see. No, no, sorry. Uh, 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 it returns returns so here return result okay print some list three comma eight comma one comma zero comma three uh, name some list is not defined uh, because there is a capital I fifteen is it correct yeah, 15 is correct. Okay. 
and just out of curiosity if I give an empty list an empty list this will be skipped there are no elements so I will just return 0 as it should be okay so very far and if I don't write result equal to 0 error because as I told you it arrives here and tells you and tells you result is not okay result equals zero define a procedure count start with that takes as input a list of strings and a single character and returns the count of the elements of the string which starts with that character for example count starts with Albert, John, Anna, comma, A returns two. Stop the video and try to do it alone. Stop it. Death. Well, not stopping the video in this exercise is the worst way of taking profit of these videos. Eh? However, I can't check, unfortunately. Oh, better, I can check. I put 20 minutes of blank video. Okay. So we have a list and a character. It's not necessary to write a capital L, but just because if I write a small L, it looks like a one. So, okay, a result equals zero for x in L colon if a x of zero, the first element of x equal equal c result equal result plus one i prefer to to call it count counter because it's a counter after all other than result okay i think we have everything no other need return counter that's it let's see the example directly print to Albert and Anna yeah fine okay I now stop the video I will go on later okay let's restart difference between a variable and an object okay uh, until now we have treated the list more or less as a variable okay. however there is a subtle difference between a variable so int float bool and I think these are all the variables that we've seen and objects which are strings and list and there will also be a difference between strings and list by the way okay you can do more or less the same things you can print uh, you can uh, do mathematical operation pass it as arguments to function to procedures receive it as a return argument from procedures several other things but it's different because it's an object uh, here's the I will write a short poem which will make it very clear for you what the difference is look at this thing here a equal 3 b equal a okay print a print b b equal 27 print a print b what will the result be so a is 3 and b is a so b becomes 3 so this will result 3 3 then b becomes 27 a however remains 3 so 3 27 Okay, so this is 3 and this is 3. So here A and B are the same. Then I change B and now A is still 3 and B is 27. Now I copy the same code, but I work with lists. Clearly we have to write lists. Okay. Uh, 
for example, uh, three, three, doesn't matter. Now look at this one, b of uh, 0, Oops. okay, or even, look, now a is a list of one element, so list of one element, apparently it's the same as a variable which contains one element, but not, because it's an object. Look at the result, which will be very surprising for you. 27, 27, look. What does it mean? Look, when I did b0 equal 27, not only did I change b, but I also change a. This is very surprising for people not used to objects. So look here, I repeat, I set a equal to a list containing only element 3. I set b equal to a, I check, in fact, both A and B contain only the element 3. Then I set the first element of B, only B, not the first element of A, only the first element of B, equal to 27. I check them. And both B and A have changed. So also A has changed. What, has, what is happening here? Well, the fact is that variables and objects interpret this thing in a slightly different way. For variables, this means create a new variable b, so a new space in the computer memory, okay, and assign it to the same value that you see in variable a. So this, uh, this creates an independent space in the computer memory called b. This one instead doesn't do it exactly the same. This creates a pointer called B to a space in the computer memory, which is the same space to which A points. Okay. So I think that the situation, there is this schema is very interesting. So when you create, a, we write a equal 27, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. you have a pointer, a is a pointer, you have a space in the computer memory which holds the list, and a is just a pointer to a space, so it's, that contains the address. When you write b equal a, you're not recreating another space in the computer memory. No, you're simply saying that B points the same space. While on the other hand, for standard variables, when you write B equal A, you are creating another space completely independent in the computer memory. So this thing written for variables, it's not the same as written for object. Why it is different? Well, the difference is because variables are small spaces in the computer memory. An integral variable, usually it's only four bytes. A float variable, it's eight bytes. A boolean variable, it's one bit. So variables uses a very fixed and limited amount of space. So for the computer, it's not a problem to create a new space. On the other hand, complex objects such as list have an unpredictable amount of space it could be extremely huge. Who knows how many elements does the list have? Who knows how many elements are you going to append? It can be really huge. So if you do something like this, uh, the computer cannot create a new space because it may explode. The memory, will, the memory usage will be pretty high, the de demanding. And so we, it just creates a new pointer so a new name, it's a sort of a new name for the same space, okay? Uh, beware that it's very different if you write in something like this. This is not the same as this, even though it has only one element. Because in this one, it goes into the space in the memory and changes the first element. 
so it changes for B and for A. This one instead, now B points to a different list, so A remains unchanged. So it means that if you work on the entire B, it's the same variables or a list. If you work only on individual elements of the list, pay attention because you may change also other lists. Okay. This changes the first element of the space in the memory to which B is pointing. This instead moves the point, the B pointer, we can imagine B as a pointer, to another space in the memory. This implies that A now is not related to B anymore. Still exists. Eh? So from now on, B goes towards something else. Okay, so here you are redefining the object. You are basically reconstructing the list object to which B points. Okay, you are redefining the object. Here you are just changing an element of the object which is already there. Okay, so when you do write b equal 55 between square brackets, you are taking this arrow and making it pointing somewhere else. A remains pointing to where it was. Okay, so beware of this difference. This is a serious implication in procedures, unfortunately. Uh, before dealing with it, uh, let's see another surprise. Strings. Okay, also strings are objects. So you say, so they also suffer from this problem? No, they don't. Because strings are immutable objects. You cannot do this thing to a string. Let's see. So, C equal computer. Print C, just to check. Now I change C of uh, uh, 4 equal to X. I change the fourth character. Let's see what happens. Look, error. String object does not support item assignment. We cannot do it since strings are immutable. So strings, uh, even though they are object, and in theory they suffer the same problem or the same feature. Okay. You can't do it because they are immutable. Once a string is defined in this way, you can't change it anymore. Okay. Or better, you can change the complete string, but you cannot change the... No. You can make C point to a different string, but not change its content. Okay, so it's not a problem if you write C equal uh, machine, okay, but you cannot take the third element of C and change it because strings are immutable. Okay. What is the value of agent 2 after this code run? Let's see, spy equals 007. Agent equal to spy, pay attention because now agent and spy point both at 007. Okay. Spy 2 equal agent 2 plus 1. So this one becomes 1 for both, however. So both agent and spy. So according to my opinion, the value of agent 2 after this code run is... Ah, sorry, spy 2, agent 2 is this one. So it's 008. Yeah. So not 8. Okay. There is a terrible implication. Ah, let's see it. You can just copy and paste to check. Okay. 
8. There is a terrible implication for procedures. What is it? The fact that is look usually this is the procedure when you use a variable inside a procedure. So when you or better you pass a variable to a procedure. So imagine you have variable third a, okay, which is set to thirty four. You pass it to the procedure. The procedure changes it. It changes only variable A inside the procedure, not the one outside, because it creates a copy. Okay, that's it. Oop. A. Okay. So, for example, def for first A. Okay, a equal uh, a plus seven. Okay, I don't care returning it. I don't even care returning it. Look, now I have a program a equal eighty five. Okay, print a to be sure. Then I run first. Then I print a. Even through here I increment it. About thirty four. So even though I increment by seven. By 10. Let's increment by 10 so we'll see it better. I increment it by 10. This will not be have an effect. Look, 34, 34. So I run the procedure. The increment doesn't have any effect because when I pass A as argument, the program creates a copy. So the variable inside it's independent from the variable outside because it creates a copy. Okay. On the other hand, oops. Google stop. Okay. On the other hand, if you do the same with a list, which is an object, and then I change the list somehow. So let's see that I change the first element of the list, L of zero. Or let's call the list A. So I hate the. Do I have to have a German keyboard every time? Okay. So I pass now a list. Okay. What happens? I pass the when I pass the list here. Okay. I am passing the pointers of the list. So the procedure still creates a copy, but not a copy of the object. It creates a copy of the pointer. So inside the procedure there is a which is a copy of this pointer here, okay. but which points still at the same procedure. So if I write a equal another list, okay, this a will not be affected. But if I modify any element of a zero, I will modify the original element because a it's a copy of this pointer. Yes, true, it's a copy of the pointer. It's not the same pointer. Can you see? And I don't want to be boring, but if instead I modify the pointer, so now A is another list, now A is a different list, okay. this will have no impact on the original list because it means that this pointer, I change and make it point in somewhere else. Who cares? The original pointer still points on the old list. Okay. Okay. So beware, because the name of a list is not the space, now it's not the space in the memory anymore, it's just a pointer to it. And there may be some surprise. Define a procedure called increment third that takes as input a list of three numbers, beware a list of three numbers and not three numbers, and increment by one the value of the third element. Def increment third L, okay, L of two equal L of two plus one. Okay, so it's the same as before. Uh, now L equal a uh, three six uh, four increment third of L. 
print l and you can see that the last one is incremented okay okay i leave you some time to reflect about this uh, serious aspect goodbye okay uh, a little addendum uh, to show you how can you do the opposite completely duplicate an object so let's uh, reproduce the example of before so i set uh, a list a for example with inside only one element okay now before i wrote b equal a now we'll write b equal copy dot deep copy a okay so we have uh, Copy is a library, okay, and deep copy is a method of the, of the is a function of the library. Uh, however, it's not uh, inside Python by default. Before you, before you do everything, you must import copy. Okay, here you are instructing Python to import this library copy. It's a library of function it contains several functions and other things. In particular, the deep copy. Deep copy simply creates a physical copy. So now. B and A are two completely independent objects. Let's let's first of all print them, and obviously they will be the same. Now let's do the trick we did last time. So B, so before B of zero, I changed the value of to twenty seven. Okay, originally this changed the value of B and A because B was just a pointer. Now B is still a pointer, but points to a memory space which is completely independent from A. So a stays in a memory space and B stays in a completely different memory space. So if I print A and print B, okay, you can see I have changed only B and not A this time because the deep copy physically copies A into a completely different memory space called B and now the two, the two objects are independent.